Good morning and welcome to our service of worship and praise on this wonderful Easter morning. It does seem like a long time ago that we said farewell to Alleluia, uh, especially this year, it seems long ago. Well, let's welcome that Alleluia back in style with our first hymn, From All That Dwell Below the Skies, God Bless Your Worship. that dwell below the skies let the creator's praise arise hallelujah hallelujah let the redeemer's name be sung through every land by every tongue Continue with the Easter greeting as you see it up on the screen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Jesus was delivered over to death for our sins. And was raised to life for our justification. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And we continue with the two verses of Jesus Christ is risen today. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Our triumphant holy upon the cross oh, Alleluia Suffered to redeem our loss oh, Alleluia Hymns of praise then let us sing oh, Unto 
Christ our heavenly King. Alleluia. Who endured the cross and grave? Alleluia. Sinners to redeem and save. continue with our confession and forgiveness. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with honest and repentant hearts. So let us acknowledge our sin to him, asking for and trusting in his forgiveness. Holy God, merciful Father, we confess that we are sinful. Every day we turn away from your will. We do not love you and each other as we should. We have disobeyed you and deserve to be punished, but we are truly sorry for our sins and trusting in Jesus, we pray, have mercy on us and forgive us. Our God is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the eternal and unchanging Almighty. He alone has power over sin, death, and the devil. Power that he brought to bear for you at the cross and at the tomb. Because Christ died, your sins are forgiven. Because Christ lives, your own resurrection is guaranteed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We continue with the next verse of Jesus Christ is risen today. Our first scripture reading is from Isaiah chapter 25, verse 1, and verses 6 through 9. Easter is God's own feast day. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness you have done marvelous things, things planned long ago. On this mountain the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the disgrace of his people from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. This is the word of our Lord. Blessed are they who hear God's word and live by it. Amen. Our singers will continue with Alleluia, Jesus Lives.
Our second reading this morning is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning with verse 50. Jesus' resurrection conquers death and gives meaning to life. Paul says, I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true, death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law, but thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And this is the word of our Lord. We continue with the next hymn, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen. the invisible, the only wise God, now resurrected from the dead, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of God for our devotion this Easter Sunday morning is from John chapter 20, beginning with verse 11. We won't read that now since we'll go through it verse by verse. And therefore, in the name of your risen, resurrected, and victorious Savior, Jesus Christ, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Hypothetical questions can be useful at times. You ask yourself, what would it be like if, 
And then you keep thinking about that what if and working toward making it a reality. And I have a feeling that plenty of useful inventions over the years all started with somebody asking, what would it be like if? So uh, hypothetical questions can be helpful. They can also be very life-changing. Uh, I wonder how many beneficial life changes have happened to people over the years by their first asking this question, what would my life be like if? Well, on this Easter Sunday morning in our text, God presents us with some hypothetical questions, some three hypothetical questions about Easter that we will uh, attempt to answer for our blessing and benefit this Easter morning. And here are those three hypothetical questions. What would it be like if Jesus had not risen from the dead? What would it be like if the risen Jesus had appeared to us like Mary? And then what would it be like if we proclaimed that risen Christ like Mary did? And that's what we want to talk about. So it's about 1,990 years ago within sight of the old walls of the city of Jerusalem, and this is what happened. Mary, that's Mary Magdalene, Mary stood outside the tomb. The disc-shaped stone that had been rolled in front of that tomb to seal it, that stone that was way too heavy for Mary to even budge, somehow or another, that stone had been removed. And this tomb that she's looking into is more like an excavated cave that has these little niches in it where the bodies of dead people are laid. Since this is a brand new tomb, there's only one dead body that has been laid in it, the dead body of Jesus. Now John reports that as Mary is looking in this tomb, she is crying. And we can understand that. This was Jesus, her very best friend. This was Jesus, who a couple of years earlier had cast out seven demons from Mary Magdalene. This was Jesus, therefore, to whom she owed her very life and whom she followed ever since that day those demons were removed. She had seen Jesus help people and miraculously feed people. She had seen Jesus raise people from the dead. She considered Jesus her Lord, and she had thought that Jesus was her Savior. But now maybe that's in doubt, because Jesus is dead. And to make matters worse, his body is missing. So we keep reading. Now, as she wept, it says she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels. How many people get to see angels? Uh, John reports that these angels were rightly in white and that they were seated where Jesus' body had been. Mary would know that because she had been present at the burial of Jesus just three days earlier. It says that one of these angels was sitting at the head and one at where Jesus' feet would have been. And then those angels actually spoke to Mary. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? And I guess in her grief, it never even dawned on her what a remarkable thing it was that there were angels speaking to her. But she answered these angels, I'm crying because... They have taken my Lord away, it says, and I don't know where they have put him. See, she had in mind to finish properly burying Jesus' body. Uh, it had been done hastily by Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus a couple of days earlier on Good Friday. The haste wasn't really their fault. The Sabbath day was about to begin and they needed to get Jesus' body in the grave. And all of this leads us then to our first hypothetical question. What if it had been us? What if we had been Mary? What would that be like? Our eyes had seen that Jesus was dead. 
Our eyes had seen that Jesus' body was missing. What would it be like if Jesus really were dead? Well, it would be horrible, of course. Uh, for one thing, we would be minus our best friend forever. Uh, our souls that scream out for mercy, our, our souls that are filthy with sin, they would stay that way forever. Uh, our bodies, those bodies that seem to get more decrepit every year, those bodies that every day now seem to be more susceptible to sickness and disease, those bodies would just eventually grow old, die, rot in the grave, and be damned forever in hell. There would be no hope and life would not be worth living if Jesus were still dead. And thank God then that that first hypothetical, what would it be like if Jesus were still dead, that's a false hypothetical because let's read on. It's, here's what it says next. It says, at this, she, Mary, turned around and see, she saw Jesus standing there. And just let that sink in for a moment. This was the Jesus that three days earlier, that Jesus had breathed his last breath. Three days earlier, that, that Jesus' life candle had been snuffed out like we did at our Good Friday service. That Jesus had a, a spear rammed through his side by a Roman soldier just to make sure that he was dead. This is that Jesus who for three days was stone cold, dead as a doornail, 1,000% deceased. And this Jesus now has climbed out of the grave. And he's presenting his eternally glorious body to Mary. That's all true. But at first, here's what it says about Mary. Mary did not realize that it was Jesus. Maybe because of the tears in her eyes. Maybe because she hadn't given that person a, a second glance. But it goes on. Jesus asked her, he asked her the same question the angels asked. Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. See, Mary's allegiance to the deceased Jesus was still very strong. Her desire to do for her dead Lord one last thing for him, that's what was moving her. But then Jesus said to her, Mary. And when she heard her name spoken by the soothing voice of her Savior, that did the trick. Because after all, we know Jesus' sheep know his voice. And so Mary turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And so the very first follower of Jesus to behold him after his resurrection is Mary Magdalene. What an honor for this woman. We go on. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. And I think what that's all about is this, that uh, Mary is seeing her risen Savior, who she thought was long gone forever, and now it's like she's not going to let him out of her sight. She's not going to let go of him. But of course, Jesus had other people to speak to on Easter Sunday morning and other things to do, and he needs to make Mary realize that, so... Don't hold on to me, Mary. But then he gives her a mission. Go instead to my brothers, that's the disciples, and tell them I am ascending to my father and your father. And I don't know if you know this, but never before, at least not quite so graphically, had Jesus ever identified his father with the disciples' father in heaven. But that's what resurrection does, see. Because of Jesus' resurrection, we are children of our Heavenly Father, now and forever. 
And a few more words for those disciples. Uh, Mary should report these words. I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And that's the one on whom they now ought to be focusing on that God in heaven, serving that God in heaven, proclaiming that God in heaven. And this brings us to our second hypothetical. What would it be like to be Mary? What if the risen Savior would appear to us? And of course he has. Just now, this very moment, by the power of his almighty word, the Holy Spirit has opened up your eyes and your heart to see that risen Savior yourself. Don't doubt it at all. And it's happened in the past, too. At your baptism, Jesus was there and he was calling out your name, just like he called out Mary's name. First name, middle name, last name, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And in the Lord's Supper, too, Jesus is right there. You are seeing his body, the very body that burst the three-day prison just for you. The very blood by which he redeemed the whole world, you included. So you have seen Jesus, just like Mary has. And what does that mean for you? Well, it means that your best friend lives and that he lives forever to intercede for you. It means that your soul is free of sin. It means that your sin has all been dead and buried forever and left in Jesus' empty tomb for eternity. It means that your body will rise. It means that body and soul, you will be healthy and happy in heaven forever. It means that you have sure hope, certain hope. It means that you have a full life and that full life is worth living. And what does that mean exactly, to uh, have a full life that's worth living? Well, it's got to mean what it meant for Mary. And this is the last part of our text. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. And, and that's what life is all about, isn't it? That's a, that's a full life. For a Christian, it means serving that risen Savior and bringing glory every day to uh, his risen name. That's a full life. And certainly it means proclaiming Jesus. So that's our, our third hypothetical question. What would it mean to proclaim the risen Savior like Mary did? Well, I think our lives would look a little bit different. For example, when we have friends or family members or relatives who are fretting over money things or health issues or school or the economy or interrupted plans, we'll now say to them, I'm going to pray about that for you. And then we'll really will do that. We will pray for them. But then maybe we'll add to them, we'll add to that, we'll say to them, but I'm not going to worry about it. And I don't think you should worry about it either. Because Christ is risen. And in the end, that's all that matters. And he will handle this problem of yours. Or if we've got family members or, or friends, as sometimes friends and family like to do, who like to argue with us about all sorts of things, uh, maybe especially non-biblical things, we'll maybe say to them now, you know what, uh, I respect your opinion, uh, I'm convinced of my opinion, but this is just not worth arguing about. And so I'm going to yield to you. And then we'll say to them, there's one thing, however, that I am convinced of, and no one's going to talk me out of this. Christ is risen. And that's all that matters. And someday, he's going to bring you and me into perfect agreement with each other. 
So we'll end this sermon where we started with those three hypothetical questions. What would it be like if Jesus were still dead? It would be horrible. But thank God that's not true. What would it be like then if we saw the risen Savior just like Mary did? And we have. And that means life for us now, today, tomorrow, forever. And what would it be like if we proclaimed that risen Christ like Mary did? I'm not sure. Let's find out. Let's find out what the powerful, almighty word of the risen Christ can accomplish through us. Let's find that out this week, next week, and always. Amen. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with the hymn, This Joyful Easter Tide. This joyful Easter tide away with sin and sorrow. My love, the crucified, has sprung to life this morrow. Had Christ, who once was slain, not burst his three day prison, our faith had been in vain. But now is Christ the risen, the risen, the risen. But now is Christ the risen. Death's flood has lost its chill since Jesus crossed the For a season slumber Till Trump from east to west Shall wake the dead in number Had Christ who once was slain That first his three-day prison Our faith had been in vain But now is Christ the risen Let us pray. All praise to you, dear Father in heaven, for you have opened up to us the way to eternal life in the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We gave you thanks for all those, we give you thanks for all those who have gone before us in the faith and now rest from their labors. Keep us in that same faith and embolden us by your resurrection to be fearless in the face of disease, uncertainty, loneliness, and every sorrow of this world. Give us, with Job, the solemn expectation to cheer us. We know that our Redeemer lives and that we too shall be resurrected and glorified to live with him in his eternal kingdom. Also now give us the patience of Job to wait for that time when we can once again gather in our church as your family of believers and sing your praises with all our heart and soul and mind. Finally, O risen Savior, set free our tongues to confess your resurrection before a world still captive to sin and death. Give us courage to go to every place and to speak in every language the salvation won for us upon the cross and the hope granted to us of life 
that death cannot overcome. We ask all this in the name of our resurrected Lord and in his name we join in praying. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We conclude our service with the verses of I Know That My Redeemer Lives.
Good morning again, and thank you for joining us at home in our service of worship and praise this uh, wonderful Easter morning. Uh, we thank some folks who were uh, helping in putting this service together, the, our singers who are here, our elders who are hoping, helping out, our accompanists and our technological people as well. Uh, we could not do this service without them, and we are very thankful for what they have done. Also then, uh, just keep in mind that uh, if you would like to bring an offering Mount Olive, you can send those offerings in through the mail. Uh, you can use bill pay uh, through your own bank, or you can also then uh, uh, use the Give Plus program that we have initiated here at Mount Olive. Have a blessed day, and one more time, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Thank you, and God bless you all.